Okay, welcome back to NAND game. Now, I had previously recorded all of arithmetics, but I forgot to actually record sound. So even though it looks like everything's solved already, uh, you haven't missed anything, I'm going through it again. Starting with the half adder. So with the half adder, we're adding A and B together, and we're ending up with a high bit and a low bit. Why is it called a half adder? Well, uh, we'll get to that later. But let's talk about binary first. In our decimal system, we have 10 numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And if we want to go higher than this, we need to add another place. 10, 11. And if we get to 99 and we want to go one higher, we have to do 100, right? Add another place. We're just reusing the same values. In our binary system, we only have the values 0 and 1. So 0 is the same as our decimal 0. 1 is the same as our decimal 1. But now if we want to add another one, we have to do what we did here and just add another place. 1, 0. So our 2 in decimal is equivalent to 1, 0 in binary. Our 3 in decimal is equivalent to 1, 1 in binary. If we want to do 4, we have to add another place and have 1, 0, 0. 5, we just keep counting 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 for 7, and then add another place for 8. Okay, but with our half adder, we're talking about adding to. So how does addition work in binary? Well, in decimal, 0 plus 0 equals 0. And that's the same in binary. In decimal, 1 plus 0 equals 1. And 0 plus 1 equals 1. And that's the same in binary. Now, when we get to 1 plus 1, that's where things change. In decimal, we have the number 2 to work with, this symbol, number 2. But in binary, we don't have that. We just have 0 and 1. So 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. All right, hopefully you're following me so far. The rules for addition in binary are the same as the rules for addition in decimal. Just the way we represent the numbers is different. So in our circuit, we're going to get two values, A and B, and we're going to add them together. We're going to get two outputs, a high bit and a low bit. So 0 plus 0 equals 0, 0. So you can see this is the same as the math we did before. We're just making sure we show these zeros here. And indeed, that's the same as our truth table right here if you look at it. So hopefully you understand addition in binary, but how do we actually implement that in a circuit? Let's just look at the truth table. And we'll look at one output at a time. We'll look at the H output to start with, and we're gonna look at only the places in which the H output is equal to one. And that's all we're gonna worry about it. When is it equal to one? It's equal to 1 when A is 1 and when B is 1. So we take an AND, A and B, and there we go. We got a check mark next to that. And you can see it's only 1 when both the inputs are 1. And it's 0 in any other case. Now we can use the same logic here for the low bit. The low bit is 1 when A is 0, and we'll call that not A and B. So we want to represent not A and B, which looks like this. We're going to invert A for not A, and then just hook it up directly to B. And you'll see that covers this part of the truth table right here, but we're still missing this part because we want the low bit on for not A and B or A and not B. So here we've got not A and B, and here we've got A and not B. And it can be either one of these, so we just or them together, right? It can be this situation or this situation. So we put those outputs into the inputs of OR, and then I'll put that. And there we go. We got check marks for all of them. But we can simplify this uh, quite a bit. Now you can see if you just look at the high bit and ignore the low bit, this looks mightily like just an AND gate, which is exactly what we have here. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And what does the low bit look like? 0, 1, 1, 0. That looks like XOR, 0, 1, 1, 0. So let's just hook it up, just like we did with the AND gate, and hook it up to the low bit, and check our solution. And there you go, that works. We've got our half adder done. We can now add two bits together. Okay, now the full adder. Now you'll notice the only difference between the half adder and the full adder is that we now have three inputs, A, B, and C, but we still have two outputs. Why do we have, why do we need three inputs? Now imagine you're back in grade school and you're asked to add these two numbers together. 
probably difficult to add these numbers in your head. They're pretty big numbers. So you were probably taught an algorithm. You start from the right side and you add them together one row at a time. So three plus two is five. Eight plus two is 10. Now, of course, we kind of have a problem here. We can't put 10 in this spot. So what you're told to do is carry the one. So one, zero. Now for the next line, we add the carry. So we add one plus six is seven, plus four is 11. So 11, we carry the one and put a one here. And then we add these up. One plus two is three. Three plus six is nine. Five plus six is 11, carry the one. And we do one plus four is five, plus one is six. And that's how you get your answer in decimal addition. And in case you need a sanity check, you may need to make sure this is right. Uh, here it is on the calculator. It turns out that the algorithm for binary addition is exactly the same. In binary, one plus zero equals one. Zero plus zero equals zero. One plus one, and I've got a little reminder in case you've forgotten, one plus one in binary is one zero. So you carry the one and put a zero here. 1 plus 1 plus 1, again, here's your reminder, is 11 in binary. Carry the 1 here and then 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1, well, that's just the same thing as 1 plus 1, so that is 1, 0. And then again, 1 plus 1 equals 1, 0. And that's how we do binary addition. So maybe you can see why we need three inputs for our, our full adder. We have our A number here in our B number here that we're adding it to, but then we have a carry. So there will be circumstances in which we will need to add three numbers together. So that's why it's called a full adder because it's an adder with an extra carry where the half adder does not have this carry input. But how do we actually build it? Well, we can do the same thing that we did before. We can look at only one output at a time. Let's start with H and look only where it's equal to one. So it's equal to one, not A and B and C. So not A and B. And we have to add C in here. So what do we do? We don't have another input for that. Well, we can just daisy chain another and on here like this. And if we hook it up, you'll see that we get a nice check mark right here. Not A and B and C. Now we can do them all like this. So it'll be really useful to have this three input and. Of course, if you wanted to have a four input and, you could keep doing this, keep daisy chaining ands together. But then we can just replace these ands with our three input and to make it a bit cleaner looking. All right, now we can do the rest of them where we have the high component is one. So A and not B and C, A, B and not C, and A, B, and C. All right, now I believe we've got these all covered. Now again, it can be this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, so we're just gonna or these all together. So similar to what we did with daisy chaining the ands, we're, we're creating like a four or by um, combining the ors like this. All right, and there, that should cover all the high bits. So we just have to do the same thing with the low bit. And there we go, you can see we have everything working, but, even with our custom three and component here, this looks really messy. It works and that's fine and it's logical and I think it's the most straightforward way to do it, uh, but there is a much better way. Since we have this half adder, we can just daisy chain a couple half adders together. So we're gonna take our first half adder, add it up to A and B, and take another half adder and add it to C. And then we'll daisy chain them together by putting this A into the low bit so we're putting the sum for the low bit into A and then outputting that low bit. Now, of course, you have to count for the high bit. And what we wanna do is we just need to or them together. Whether the high bit is on over here or over here, we wanna make sure it gets carried to the output. So just daisy chaining a couple half adders together. Check solution, three components used. This uses the fewest possible components. Uh, but it is possible to solve this with a lower number of NAND gates if you want to use fewer components. But this is a very simple, easy solution. And now we have our full adder. Okay, next is a multi-bit adder. And really all that is, is just like we had here, we're adding more than just three bits together. We want to add bigger numbers together. So again, 
If you have these two numbers you're trying to add together, you start with 1 plus 1, and you get 1, 0. But you have to take this 1 and carry it up here. And you can do the same thing over here. 1, 0, 1, that makes 1, 0. You take this 1 and you carry it over here. You can accomplish this in the circuit really just by daisy chaining full adders together. So we have our first full adder here, and we'll start by adding A0 to B0. If we have our addition here of 0, 1 plus 1, 1, this first number up top will be our A, the second number will be our B, and then this is A0, this is A1, this is B0, and this is B1. So we have to add A0 plus B0, which is what we're doing here. And then we'll hook up to the carry, to the carry input here. And this is just in case um, there's a carry from like a previous operation, there might be a carry input like this. So we're adding A0 and B0. Now we gotta add A1 plus B1. So A1 goes to A, B1 goes to B. And for the carry, we're gonna carry the high bit from the first adder into the second adder. The output of our A0 plus B0 operation goes into S0 for the low bit. Our output of A1 plus B1, the low bit goes to S1, and then the high bit goes to the carry. So we're just daisy chaining these adders together. Check solution, and we got it. Two components used, and this uses the fewest possible components. Um, but again, you can use it with fewer number of NAND gates if you were to do it with simpler components. Uh, but this is a pretty basic, simple, easy solution. And as it says here, uh, we're gonna build a 16-bit processor in this game now this is only adding two two-bit numbers, but if you wanted to add more, you just keep adding these adders. You daisy chain the high bit to the carry, and then you do A2 plus B2, put the, out, the low bit to the output, and you just keep going in the same exact pattern for as many numbers as you need. It really is just about daisy chaining these adders together. All right, the next level is increment. So we gotta add one to a 16-bit number. We're incrementing the number up by one. We're taking our input A, and we're just gonna add one to it. So how do we get one? Well, we can take an inverter, and as long as nothing is hooked up to the inverter, it always outputs one, so we just hook that up to B, and there we go. We've incremented whatever our input is by one, by just adding one to it. Put the sum as the output, and check solution, this works. Two components used, and this is the simplest possible solution. We're just adding one to whatever our input is. Subtraction. So we wanna output A minus B. So here's the binary number 1011 that equals 11 in decimal, but that's not important. What we really want to know is how to take this number and make it negative. Now in our normal mathematical system, we would just put a minus sign here. But remember, we're using binary, we're using a computer. All we have are ones and zeros to work with. We don't have a minus sign. So what do you do? Well, you simply add in something called a sign bit, where you designate this number, usually the number that's all the way over to the left, to tell you whether the number is gonna be positive or negative. Typically, zero is positive and one is negative, although it doesn't exactly work the way you'd think. Just because zero, one, zero, one, one equals 11 in decimal, one, one, zero, one, one, even though this is the sign bit, does not equal negative 11 in decimal. Not usually. You could design a circuit where it did work that way, but most computers use something called two's complement, and I'll uh, put a chart on screen so you can see kind of the pattern of two's complement with numbers, but it's worth noting that just changing the sign bit to a one doesn't just turn the number negative usually. It's kind of a different system, and the reason that system is used is really because it makes a lot of mathematical operations just a bit simpler to implement in circuitry. I don't really think you need to know the details of why. Um, I think it's just worth noting here. So maybe you kind of get what's going on, maybe you kind of don't need to, but how do you actually subtract two numbers in circuitry? Well, it's really simple if you're using the two's complement system. You take our adder. If it's A minus B, well, A is positive there, so we're just gonna put it, plug in A directly into A. Now minus B, we need to turn B negative. How do we do that? We're gonna invert it, simple. We just invert it, but then we also have to add one. And it's easiest just to add that in, in the carry. All right, hook that up and check solution, and it works. 
the simplest possible solution. Again, all you need to know to do a minus b is you use an adder, add in a directly, invert the number you're subtracting, b, and then add one. All right, and we've built all the components for fundamental arithmetic operations. It says here that modern processors support much more complex arithmetic, such as multiplication, division, floating point numbers. In this game, we are gonna keep it simple and create bare minimum necessary for working processor. That's good because multiplication and circuitry is a little more complicated. Division is way more complicated. Don't wanna do that. And we will carry on to the next level. Equal to zero. So this should output one if and only if all the bits are zero. So this is what uh, the start of a truth table would look like. If all the bits are zero, we output one. In any other situation, say B is one and the rest are zero, we're gonna output zero. Or if they're all one, we're gonna output zero. It doesn't matter, we only output one when all the bits are zero. Now again, we just have to look at what we've done before. We only focus on when the output is one and we need not A and not B and not C and not D. Or here we have B zero, one, two, and three. So not B three, not B2, not B1, not B0. And we just and them all together, and then we should check solution, and that works. Seven components used, this is optimal. If you wanna know if your input is zero, this is the circuit you use, not too difficult. And this will be probably used for comparisons later on. We might wanna check for equality at some point, and this circuit will allow us to do that. All right, less than zero. So we wanna output one if the number is negative. So if the number is greater than or equal to zero, we'll output a zero. Otherwise, if it's negative number, if it's less than zero, we'll output a one. Now recall what I said earlier about the sign bit. Typically, the way it works is if the sign bit, which is the one that's all the way to the left, if that sign bit is zero, it's gonna be positive. And if it's one, it's gonna be negative. So we just have to look at the bit that's all the way to the left. So we have a 16-bit splitter here. This will split our 16-bit number into uh, the individual 16 components of each bit. And we wanna look at the one that's all the way to the left. That's number 15 here. And if it's zero, we wanna output zero. If it's one, we wanna output one. So we can just hook it up directly like that. Check solution, and that's it. This is the simplest possible solution. Uh, technically, no components used. And uh, that's it, we've done all the levels in arithmetics. Uh, next time we'll do uh, switching. Should be a fun one, should be a short one, but uh, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you next time.